We can create headers and footers that span our PDF documents to create a uniform appearance for our work. This can be a great benefit if we're pulling documents from various sources and combining them together into a single PDF. The header or footer can be the common thread to provide a sense of continuity throughout the document. Setting up a header and footer is not very difficult within Acrobat. We're working with the file cfonewsletter.pdf. If we go to the Tools pane and open up the Pages category, we can see the third section down is Edit Page Design. And here within that section is Header and Footer. Clicking this gives us a drop down list with three choices Add Header and Footer, Update, and Remove. We'll go ahead and click Add Header and Footer. This gives us a rather large dialog box that allows us to configure the headers and footers all in one place. This is very similar to headers and footers that you might see in a spreadsheet application such as Microsoft Excel. So if you've worked with that type of program, you'll feel at home here. We have the configuration section here at the top and a live preview underneath. The header consists of a left, a center, and a right section. And the left section is left justified to this margin the right section is right justified, and the center section is center aligned. At the top, we have the ability to select any font on our system and choose the font size and color. Next to that, we have the margin settings, which are represented in the preview by the blue dotted lines you see here. Looking at these settings and viewing the preview at the bottom, we can see that the margins seem to be set up just fine for our document and we'll keep an eye on the preview as we work just to make sure. So we'll start in the left side of the header and we'll add the name of our document, which is CFO Newsletter. Right away, we can see it appear in the preview section down below. We'll go to the right hand side and we'll put some descriptive text in here as well, monthly update. We'll leave the center section blank in the header. Next, we'll go down to the footer and in the left side, we'll add the website. In the right of the footer, we want to add the date, and in the center, we'll add the page number. But before we do, let's click this link right here to set the page number and date formats. In this dialog, we can see the various formats. For date, we can see the full range of almost any date format you can think of. We'll choose a two-digit month and a four-digit year format. And in the page number format, you can see the options here as well. We'll choose page one of N, where N is the total number of pages in the document. Notice that we can set this to start numbering with any page number, not just page one. But in our case, we'll leave it as the default on page one. Now that we've set up the formats, we can insert the page number by clicking here in the center and then clicking the button right here to insert the page number automatically. Likewise, we can do the same with the date in the right-hand section by clicking Insert Date. Notice the special formatting that's placed when we use the buttons. If we want to change the format later, we'll have to delete these characters from the text and reinsert after we've made our new formatting choices. Or you can commit these codes to memory if you're so inclined and type them in manually. We can click on OK and we have our header and footer uniformly placed on every page, as we can see scrolling through the document. If we need to modify the header or footer after they've been placed, we can easily accomplish that by coming back to the header and footer section in the Tools pane, clicking the drop-down menu, and choosing Update. This brings us right back to the same dialog box we had before, and we can make the changes we need. Let's say we wanted to change the date format, and we wanted it to be a two-digit date with a two-digit year. We click on OK. We'll erase this, and then click Insert Date to get the new format. We can click on OK, and the changes will be applied. But before we click on OK, notice that we can also click up here to save the settings and give these settings a name. Once we click on OK, this settings will appear in the Save Settings list for future use. We'll click on OK, 
and we can see that our footer has been updated as we specified. We can also remove the header and footer using the same drop down list here in the Tools panel. If we click and choose Remove, we get a warning Are you sure? We click Yes, and the header and footer is gone. One last interesting capability of this feature is that we can add headers and footers to multiple files at a time, even if they're not open. Let's go ahead and close this document without saving. Now with no file open at all, we'll go over here to the Tools pane, we'll choose Header and Footer, and then Add Header and Footer. Now we get a different dialog box. We can add files to a list for processing. If we click the Add Files icon at the top and choose Add Files, we get our typical file open dialog and we can choose a file. In fact, we can control click or command click to multi select files. And when we click on Open, we can see that all the files are in the list. We can click here to add more files as well. If you have any open files, this option becomes available, and you can choose here to add them to the list as well. And you can have a mix of open and closed files in your processing list. Once we click on OK in this dialog box, the next thing we get is the Add Header and Footer dialog that we saw before. We'll use our Saved Preset, which saves us a lot of time in setting things up, and we'll click on OK. Next, Acrobat asks us how to save the output of the modified files. We can save them in the same folder or a different folder. If we target a different folder, we can browse and choose the location. In this case, we'll select a desktop and make a new folder called Test. And we'll choose that folder as our location. Notice this option, Don't Save Changes. This just leaves all the files open in Acrobat after processing, and we have to go through them and save them one by one. We'll stick with the folder that we just created. If we check this option, Acrobat launches the completed files within its open window after the batch processing is complete. For the file names, we can choose to stick with the original file name, or we can add a prefix and or a suffix. We'll add dash updated to all of our files just to show that we've made the changes. We click on OK and Acrobat starts working on the files, adding the headers and footers. Once it's finished, we can see the files left open as we requested, and here they are in the Windows list. We can also see that the headers and the footers have been added to all of our files. If we minimize Acrobat and go to the desktop, we can see that the file names here in the test folder have been updated as we requested with the dash updated suffix added to the file name. That's all there is to creating headers and footers in Acrobat, a nice, easy to use feature.